I want to give a quick overview of volume visualization and how it's different from surface-based visualization. So if you remember surface visualization, you take your data and you have to draw around or label the pixels in some way and you convert a, a segmentation into a surface. Volume visualization is different. So if I'm in here, I've loaded the same MR scan into the MITK workbench. And if I've got this volume visualization plugin here, I click the volume visualization button and hey presto, there's something drawn here in 3D. So the question is, what is this? How was that achieved? So if I just turn it off momentarily, do you remember the camera model, the pinhole camera model that we covered in the calibration lectures? Well, if you imagine that your eyes are the camera and you're looking forward into this 3D space and this volume of data is positioned before you on the screen here or in 3D space right in front of your eyes, then the challenge of volume visualization is to work out what to paint each one of these pixels on the screen. So imagine from your eyeball you project a ray, a straight line from your eye to this pixel on the screen. What colour do you paint it? This is achieved by ray tracing. So imagine a straight line from your eye and you set out one millimetre at a time, step by step by step by step. Now, until you, before you get to the data, there's obviously no data to look at, so you do nothing. But once you get to the data, you need some way of converting volume or voxel data into a colour that you might put on the screen. So this is achieved typically with a certain number of transfer functions. So if you look at this graph here, the minimum value on the x-axis is zero and the maximum value is 1981. So this is the range of image intensities in my volume data. It's the grayscale of the MR data. On the y-axis we have opacity and then we have this function drawn here by defining some landmark points. As you progress along your ray, you pick up the value of the vo voxel data and look in this graph and you map the image intensity to an opacity. So here we will see, if we change this graph, firstly, the rendering is changing in real time. Um, so basically, these parameters control the rendering directly. There is no segmentation necessary. So in this example, if you see this number here, 78, values below 78 are mapped to an opacity of zero, so they disappear. And then as you go along this graph, so the opacity changes. So if you imagine your array of light that goes into the volume data, when the opacity is non-zero, you've got a partial surface. So you compute a shading function to say, well, imagine that the gradient that I'm, the surface normal of the thing that I'm looking at is pointing at a certain angle. Where's my light source? I, I compute a shading function based on the opacity of that data. Uh, so let's just for the sake of the example, let's make everything fully opaque, so non-see-through. If I move all of these down, do you see how all of the data, even the noisy background, is becoming non-transparent? Which is obviously a useless rendering, but you get the point. As we move these points along, we start to be able to control what can be seen in this image. So let's move all these along. There is a way of deleting some of these points, but I've forgotten it. And let's move this bottom one here. So what we're saying now, missed, here we go. Values up to 320 are completely transparent. So this is where you can start to see through it. If I take these crosshairs off, values below 320 are now transparent. 
So you can now just kind of look inside. If I move that down slightly, move it to here, you can start to see through my skin here, and you can actually see the brain inside. So with no segmentation at all, you can start to see different parts of the anatomy purely based on mapping between intensity and um, opacity. Now there are other things to do. Once you've got the intensity, you can define colors here. Where did it go? Here we go. So you can do the same kind of thing where once you've decided the opacity, you also have a certain color on top of it. Um, so much the same idea for every little step along the way, you, you compute a color and an opacity and the same with gradient. But the question remains, uh, how useful is this? Or how useful would this be in the operating room? This is a difficult interface to use. So it's useful for some preoperative visualization if you're trying to look at a certain structures that are easily identified purely based on their intensity profile. So for example, bone in a CT scan is very bright. So that would be a really good candidate. You wouldn't have to segment anything. You could just look at the bone using volume rendering. But when it comes to actually displaying things in the OR, it's a very difficult visualization to control. So as long as you've got some nice default settings, it would be quite useful. But I can't imagine people fiddling around with this too much during a procedure. It would simply take a lot of time. So if you want to use volume, volume visualization, you would have to pre-compute some very nice thresholds and so that the operator could just select a bunch of presets and the right thing was visualized, which is non-trivial, but at least uh, it, it could work, uh, but the user interface needs a lot more thought. So this concludes kind of what volume visualization is. Uh, I hope that's been illustrative. So there's no segmentation is the key take home, and it's all controlled by either intensity to opacity, intensity to color, or gradient to opacity transfer functions.